Good morning guys and welcome to the Monday Morning Sidewalk. I've gotten several emails about people being very happy with the videos and even people who think they see me places and so <laughs> it's kind of interesting uh, to think that they saw me but they didn't. So anyway, we'll move on. This is going to be a, a, a skiff full of information and I'm going to pull you along today and we'll see where we get. All this information is in, in the story on the Monday Morning Sidewalk article today. Uh, first part of that is I uh, had a great event this past weekend. It's the Green Belt Alliance. They have a thing called the Green Fest, and that happened over at Lake Ray Roberts, just below the dam. We probably had several hundred to people that at least walked by my booth, and several thousand that were there. I'd say I don't know, two or three thousand during the day. It ran from noon to six. This is the third attempt, and this one was successful. The first two attempts at the Green Fest got rained out, so it's kind of the first, but the third. Very interesting. Lots of lots of things going on there. Of course, it's over now, but I was able to expose some some youth, a bunch, mostly kids actually, to fly tying and casting and information about fly fishing. Which, even if they remember it just for a second, to me that's worth it. And uh, if they if they get that craving, then that's even better. I did have some many you know people that stopped are from out of state. I had Oregon, Arkansas. Um, a lot of Colorado people that are transplants and they're looking for a way to fly fish while they're here. They've started their kids on it while they were living in other states and then their kids didn't think it could be done anywhere else. So really taking advantage of that, you know, and trying to bring those folks in. And I gave away a few flies to those those kids too so that they'd have something to, to fly fish with locally that maybe they'll catch a fish with here and then get on to the scene here as well. I also had a lot of people, adults, interested in starting a fly fishing club for Denton which I'm very surprised that little old Denton, Texas would actually support something like that, but we'll, I guess we can find out, you know. If somebody wants to start a club, just be sure and let me know, and, and we'll see what we can do about getting the organizational thing going. And Of course, it'll be an independent club, but um, maybe the time is right. Backing up to last week, um, I've been kind of waiting to do some research on Lake Ray Roberts and, and what's going on there with the carp population because in shore we're not finding any anymore. It's been about a month to a month and a half. We had a big rain event back in I guess July, early July and then uh, the carp were in pretty solid and they were gone, like disappeared kind of gone, like beamed up and taken away to another planet or something. So got out there Thursday, last Thursday did a water sample and I'll write all about it in here, plus the, the uh, tests that have been done on the water and what we're finding out about the water on Lake Ray Roberts. And then Friday, I got an invite to go out on the East Cape Skiff with a friend of mine. And there's a couple other guys with skiffs, and I've, I've ran some photos on Instagram. If you don't follow the Instagram feed, there's photos that pop up there that I put on wherever I am or what's going on and, and whatever. So be sure you follow on Instagram. It's becoming really popular and a really a, a, a good thing to be able to, to send out information. What I what we found out is the water is very, very, very clear on Lake Ray Roberts. And one of the prime carp flats that I use, there's no carp and the clarity is, is, is unbelievable. And these science types um, tested the water and found that there's like no solid matter in the water. It's just cleaner and clearer than tap water. So we've got a problem out there and we're trying to figure out what the next test will be and things like that. If you're a scientist, if you're a microbiologist or a, a marine biologist and need a water sample sent to you, I can make sure that you get a sample of this water and you can test it in your lab wherever you are and gladly you know, get you to help add information and knowledge to what's going on here. We can't help but think it's related to zebra mussels, you know, because uh, we're fully infested with zebra mussels, and and that always brings water clarity. But we didn't know what the out, outcome would be once the water cleared up. Well, we're starting to find out. So Friday, I got to go out on a skiff, and when I went out Friday, my specific goal was not really to catch fish, but just to see if there were any fish, because it was that desperate. And I was I was pretty giddy because we did find fish, but they're 200 yards offshore, no closer than that and there was very very few carp mostly it was buffalo and i did catch a 12 pound buffalo on uh, on ray roberts on friday but um it was not reassuring in any way to see that there was there was no carp inshore and basically they're in three to five feet of water 
and you can see them because the water's clear. And um, so it, it's pretty pretty disheartening to to think that the uh, the biology of Lake Ray Roberts has changed possibly permanently. But we're going to find out, you know, as time goes by. Um, I've had to reschedule trips and cancel basically the rest of the season because of this, and this is the news flash that you get. Um, normally, I'm I, last year I caught my last carp on November 5th, and I haven't I haven't seen a carp inshore since the end of July. So tough deal. We're going to find out more as we go along, and hopefully we can adapt. Um, I am headed out to the coast again this week, and I'm kind of getting hooked on the jetties thing. So follow along. I'm going back to the jetties. I'm pretty sure I'm going back to the jetties, and and I think I'm going to actually start doing a, a some some kind of series on on Texas Gulf Coast jetties. So it should be interesting and fly fishing on the jetties uh, because it's probably one of the more difficult things to do, and the results when the fish are there can be pretty spectacular. Moving right along, I was uh, actually watching the morning shows this morning and they announced a new camera. Can you believe it? Just in time for Christmas. I don't know what they're thinking. GoPro Hero 4 is coming out. This is a pretty spectacular camera. Not that the other ones aren't, but this one, according to what uh, the CEO, Nick Woodman, was saying this morning, has the ability, on I guess its highest resolution, to record 8.3 megapixel single frame. So each frame on the highest resolution is 8.3 meg. It's 8.3 meg photograph basically, which means um, you can take any single frame and have a great photograph from that. <clears throat> Let's see what else I've got as I'm kind of strolling through this thing. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, it's an interesting concept, but these guys that showed up were from, from the Texas Gulf Coast. Not Texas, Gulf Coast, I'm sorry, from Louisiana and one from here in Texas. To do this uh, event last Friday and Saturday, they're kind of calling it the Carp Gold Cup kind of thing. I don't think I'm letting any secrets out of the bag on that. Very interesting concept, very interesting uh, um, uh, prizes and things. And it's, it's kind of small right now, but you never know how it can turn out. Uh, I enjoyed seeing a Chittam skiff up close. Of course, being on the East Cape, and then also there was a Hell's Bay whip ray. So that's three really nice skiffs, and it got me to thinking about skiffs and and what uh, you know some way of, of gathering more information about skiffs. So look for a new website launch probably at the beginning of the year called SkiffNation.com. Hopefully, it'll be a site that has uh, kind of compresses all the information about skiffs into one place. Everybody's got something like that, whether it's discussion boards or whatever. But we're going to kind of go one step further, kind of like we always do here at Texas Flycaster, and see if we can uh, really provide a location where everything emanates from when it comes to skiffs, saltwater skiffs, and how to use those for fly fishing and um, how to use them in freshwater fly fishing, which is the novelty of the whole thing and where I think there's a lot of room for learning and a lot of room for, for uh, actually evolving and, and making uh, something that's made for one purpose actually work really well for another purpose. That's about it for today. I'm trying to be quick, kind of all over the place, but I hope you have a great week. Um, I think uh, the information here is really good on, on the writing this, this, this Monday morning. Of course, um, there's going to be more stories coming out this week. There's just so many days in a week, and I try to let stories kind of germinate for one or two days before I, before I run another story. So have a great week. If you got any great stories, let me know. Thanks for watching, and as always, check out www.texasflycaster.com, and I thank my sponsors like Tailwaters Dallas, Hatch Reels, and Lampson, and TFO Fly Rods for being a part of my success in fly fishing as well as the Howler Brothers. Those guys, I just love those guys over there and the clothes they make. We're heading into fall, so make sure you check out howlerbros.com for their fresh new clothing for the fall and winter. Thanks for watching, guys.